glory, glory, glory be to God forever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. We honor you today. We glorify your holy name today. We exalt you. We honor you. We adore you. We magnify you above all else. We declare you alone are God. From age to age, you are God. From eternity to eternity, we declare that you are God. From everlasting to everlasting, we declare that you are God. There is none glorious as you, ancient of days, God of the heavens, God of the earth, God of the universe, we bless your holy name. We thank you for another wonderful day. We thank you for a glorious day. This is the day you, O oh Lord, has made. We shall rejoice in it. We shall be glad in it. Thank you for making it a wonderful day already. Thank you, Father, for your loving kindness towards us. We honor you. We bless you. We exalt you. We glorify your holy name in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because... From age to age, you alone are God. There is none like you in all the heavens, in all the earth. There is none we can liken unto you. There is none we can compare to you. You are God. You are a gracious God. You are always doing great things. Thank you for the great things you are doing. We marvel. Thank you for the amazing works of your hand. Thank you for your mighty acts in our lives. Thank you for your great acts, your great works. We give you all glory. We'll give you all honor. Blessed be your holy name, mighty God of Israel. We exalt you because there is none we can liken unto you. We honor you today in Jesus' name. O oh, great God of the heavens and the earth, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the Bible says, Unto you shall all flesh come, all flesh. All sons, all daughters will come to you. We honor you, Almighty God. We declare you are a good God. You are a glorious God. You are a faithful God. There is no worthy of our praise like you. Thank you for the amazing things you are doing. We are grateful. Thank you because we are alive today. Thank you for the battles you have fought on our behalf. Thank you for the victory you have given us. We are grateful. Blessed be your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for that man, for that woman that will hear me today. I thank you for that family that will join me today, that will hear your words, that will hear your voice. Father, touch their heart. Minister to them today in the name of Jesus. Comfort somebody. Heal somebody by the simplicity, by the power, that by the anointing of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask of you to intervene, superimpose, let your counsel, let your purpose, let your will be done in somebody's life today. Let their lives never remain the same because they have joined this service even this hour in Jesus' precious name. And the people of God say, Amen. Again, I welcome you to church. I welcome you to Restorers House International Ministries. Uh, uh, we are based out here in London, in Stratford, London east of london if you are anywhere around the east of london stratford and you have any families around we will be glad even rejoice in our hearts even to rejoice with you as you join us in the name of jesus the lord bless you today as you listen in jesus name please kindly share this sermon with somebody this is the last sunday in the month of march we are transitioning into a new month into a new season from darkness into light and I want you to share this with somebody because their life will not remain the same. By the Spirit of God, by the anointing, by the power of the Holy Ghost, somebody's life will be transformed. Somebody's story will change. And I know it will begin with you in the mighty name of Jesus. I say it will begin with you in the mighty name of Jesus. I trust it will begin with you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you as you join us today, and I trust that your mighty God will do a new work, a great work in your life, in my life, for His own glory, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Today, I am going to be preaching, uh, today being the last Sunday in the month of March. We are transitioning into a new month. The next Sunday, you will see me to be in the new month of April. Today is the last Sunday in the, in the month of March, and you will notice that we... We have lost one hour. Some people are gaining and some people are losing. But I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. 
as the hours is short so shall your testimony in the name of jesus burst out in the i say as the hours are cut short so shall your misery so shall your reproach so shall your shame be cut short so shall the delay in your life be cut short so that the so shall the miracles that you're expecting so they shall be cut short the time of your labor the time of your delay the time of your struggle they shall be cut short in the mighty name of jesus very soon you shall be celebrating in the light in jesus mighty name amen and amen in jesus name today i'm going to be preaching very quickly on a sermon i've entitled in your darkest hours the lord is there can somebody say that with me in my darkest hours the lord is there say it one more time in my darkest hours the lord is there amen let me show you what the bible says beginning from revelation chapter number 21 the Bible says there, I will start from verse 3. I will read a long verse because the Lord is saying, I am with you. I am there. Now, look at what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 21, beginning from verse number 3. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of God says, And I heard a great voice out of the heavens saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people and god himself shall be with them amen and be their god and they shall be his people he says and god himself shall be with them and he will be their god verse 4 then says and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes amen and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain i say amen there in the mighty name of jesus christ he says no crying that's what he says no more crying there amen and then he says neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold i make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful and he said unto me it is done I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountains of the water of life freely. The Almighty God says, I will give you of the fountains of the water of life freely. He said, the time is gone. He said, a season is gone. That means no more sorrow for you. No more death for you. That's what the Bible says. No more crying for you. He says, I will wipe away all the tears in their eyes. Father, I thank you. Say that with me. Lord, I thank you. Wipe away the tears of my eyes. Wipe away the sorrow of, sorrows of my eyes. Take away the reproach of my life in the name of Jesus. He says, no more death, no more sorrow. Lord, no premature death in my life. No premature death in my family. No sudden death in my family. In the name of Jesus. He said there shall be no more pain. He said the former things are passed away. The reproach, the shame, the ridicule of the past. He says they are past. Because he says I will do a new thing. He says I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. That's what he says. I pray in the name of Jesus. The God who is the beginning. Who is the ending. Who has said he will wipe away every tear from your eyes. I pray that that God comes through for you today in the mighty name of jesus and again i say to you in your darkest hour the lord is there told me to told me to zechariah chapter number two zechariah chapter number two he says he's there zechariah chapter number two look at what we say from verse 10 zechariah chapter number two beginning from verse number 10 the word of god says sing and rejoice i pray in the mighty name of jesus singing rejoicing shall be your portion from this day as you move into a new month into a new season because god says i will do a new thing because he is there with you he says i will do a new thing so in the name of jesus you will sing you will rejoice in the mighty name of jesus in this new week you have entered into as you are entering into a new month in the name of jesus you will find reasons to rejoice by the authority that is in the name of jesus by the power by the anointing that is in that name in the mighty name of jesus i call for the host of heaven the powers of heaven the angels of god to enforce that word in your life beginning with me also in the mighty name of jesus it says i will sing 
and I will rejoice. I pray that will be your experience in this season, in this new month, in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? Because the Lord is there. Look at what it says. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For lo, I come and I will dwell in the midst. In the midst of thee, saith the Lord. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. And shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of thee. You see, God says, I will dwell in the midst of thee. Pay attention to the word of God. He says, I will dwell there. I will dwell in the midst of my people. I will dwell in the midst of thee. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. God says, and the word of God is being declared unto your ears today. This word is read to your ears. The Almighty God says, I will be joined to them in the last day. I will be joined to them in this new week. I will be joined to you in this new month. In this season you have entered, I will be joined with you. And God says, they shall know that I am they are my people and I will dwell in the midst of thee. That's what God says. Almighty God says, I will dwell in your midst. Again, I speak to you. My sermon is entitled by the Spirit of the Lord. In your darkest hours, the Lord is there. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, when I say the Lord is there, that is the name of Jehovah. That is one of the names of Jehovah. It's called Jehovah Shammah. That is one of the names of the Almighty God. Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Hallelujah to Jesus. That is what Ezekiel said. He said, if you look in the last book, and even the last sentence, the last verse of the book of Ezekiel, he reminds us, Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35, it is there. Ezekiel chapter 38, uh, sorry, 48. That's the last chapter in the book of Ezekiel. After that, you go to Daniel. In the last chapter, verse, uh, uh, which is verse uh, 48, and the last verse, which is verse 35 of Ezekiel, it says, the Lord is there. You see, the context where the Bible says the Lord is there is a what? You see, the blessings of the Lord was upon his people in dividing the land, giving blessings to his people. He divided the land, different measures of the land, for a possession to the people. He gave them lands and he gave them their own measure, he gave them their priests. And then he ended up by saying to them, in the city that I have given you, in the land, in the portion, in the blessing I have given you, he said to them, he said to Benjamin, he said to Dan, he said to Manasseh, all the cities. And then he said, the Lord is there. So in all the blessings that God has given his people to all the nations, that he has called to himself, he says, the Lord is there. That is the last sentence. In all the blessings I have given you, the Lord says, I am there. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, when the scripture says, remember that scripture, it says, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich and adds no sorrows. Now, with understanding, it is now clearer to me when i see it in the context of the lord is there you see when the lord gives you a blessing when the lord gives me a blessing he says i will be there with you i'll be there with that blessing and no sorrow is permitted with it can you say amen to that i say amen to that so when the lord gives you children he gives you a blessing he gives you children he says i will be there with your children whatever they may be the children that I have given you, I will be there with them. And they will not die prematurely. That is what the Almighty God is saying. I say amen today to that. Because my own children will not die prematurely. All the sons and the daughters that the Almighty God has given me, none of them will die prematurely. What about your own children? I say, what about your own sons? What about your own daughters? They will not die prematurely in the name of Jesus. You see, the context is this. When the Lord blesses you, with any earthly blessings or material blessings it could be your finance it could be your business it could be any influence he has given you or he prospers you or he promotes you the lord is saying i will be there with you and the enemy shall not be able to spoil those blessings can you say amen the blessing of the lord truly it make it rich it has no sorrow why because jehovah shama because the lord is there when the Lord is there with you, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous because it is the blessing of the Lord. It make it rich. It will not permit the enemy. It will not permit the works of the enemy to prevail over you. Can you say amen to that? I say in my life, the blessing of the Lord that I'm seeing every day, the blessings of the Lord that I see that I rejoice over every day, that makes me to be who I am today, that makes me to be glad in my God. The enemy shall not be able to scatter them. In the name of Jesus, I pray they say for you. I said the blessings of God that you see in your life, the blessing that you are, 
Is it of life? Is it of good health that you can hear me? You can see me. You are not on hospital bed. They are not crying over you. You are not crying over your father. You are not crying over your mother. Haba, it is time for you to glorify God. I know that the Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah is his name. You see, last Sunday I preached in the sermon, and the title of my sermon was The Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You see, the Spirit of the Lord has sent me to somebody this morning. I said, the Spirit of the Lord has sent me to somebody, to a family, to a man, to a woman, even this hour, to a son and a daughter that has made him, the Lord God Almighty, their shepherd. The one that has made the Lord to be, to, to be their shepherd and the one that look unto him only. They look unto him only, unto the Almighty God, who is their shepherd, for direction, for instruction, for protection, for deliverance, for divine provision. Because he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restored my soul. He led me beside the still waters. That's what the Bible says. He says, I'll be there with you. When he's leading you, it simply means he is there with you. May that God not forsake you in the mighty name of Jesus. As you go by day and by noon and by night, the Lord says, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there with you. Whenever you go through any darkness, any season, the Lord is saying to you, my son, my daughter, I am there with you. Again, I want to say to you, child of God, no matter what you are going through even right now, the Lord said, I will be there. Malezu, make it just not in name. His name is Jehovah Shama. Not just in name that you be there. He, because that is his name, but in essence, in his full essence, in his full capacity as your Almighty God, in the full reality that and confront the the powers of darkness that confront you. Whoever confronts me, my God will confront them. I say the same thing for you. Whatever power confronts you, by day, by noon, or by night, whether you are sleeping, whether you are walking, whether you are workplace, the power of the Almighty God will confront them in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be. And if the Lord is with us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? If the Lord Almighty God is there with us, who can battle against the Lord? <laughs> who can battle against the Lord of hosts? Who can battle against the mighty one of Israel? Who can battle against the almighty God? No one. Nobody. No power. No throne. No altar. No dominion. No angel. Whether they are cherubims, whether they are seraphims. No fox. Visible and visible. Whether names that are known to man. Whether names that are not unknown. No names in the heavens. Names in the sun. Names in the moon. Names in the stars. Name in the heavenlies, names in the stars, in the waters, in the depth of the waters. No one, no principality. They may try. Melia, dozo, e kasotelia. They may try, but they shall fail in the name of Jesus. In your life, I pray for you, child of God. The power that are rising up against you, very soon they shall know that the Lord is there with you. You didn't say amen. I said very soon they will know that your mighty God, Jehovah Shama, is there with you. Hallelujah to Jesus. And why will they fail? It is because the Lord is there. You didn't hear me. Because the Lord is there. You know, the Bible says, those that rise up against you, those that fight against you, they shall fall for your sake. That's what the Bible says. They shall fail for your sake. That's what the Bible says. They shall not prevail. Why? Because the Lord, Jehovah Shammah, is there. The Lord is there. Mele Hadozo Prahada. The Lord is a spirit. He is there. You just have to come to that understanding, to that knowledge that the Almighty God is there with you. Hallelujah. You just have to know that. That Jehovah Shammah, the Lord God Almighty, if he is your shepherd, then he is there. Melia the Zupra, if he's your shepherd, if he's the one leading you, if he's the one guiding you, if he's the one that you are following, if he's the one that you are obeying, if he's the one that is ordering your footsteps, then you know that the Lord God Almighty he is there with you. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, that's what the Bible says. Whoever rises up against you, they shall fall. If they fight against you, they shall fail because the Lord is there with you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, there are times, listen to me, child of God. There are times when we go through stuff. You know that. There are times when we go through circumstances that are bigger than us. You, you forget sometimes. <laughs> you, from, you forget the promise of the Lord. I get it. The storms, they rage, so they beat you from every corner. We forget that the Lord is there. You forget, but I want to remind you, in your darkest hours, 
in your darkest seasons, I say to you, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. The Lord is there. The Lord is there. My mission today, my assignment to somebody, by the Spirit of the Lord, is, is to remind somebody that in your darkest hour, in your night nice season, in the time when everything looks hopeless, the Lord is there with you. Can somebody say amen to that? So don't be afraid. Don't despair. Now, I will show you what the scripture says. Ah, Pastor, you are telling me the Lord is there. And I'm in this pain. I am in this condition. I am in this valley. I am in this mountain. I am in diverse battles. Let me show you a scripture. Look at Isaiah chapter number 46. I am tempted to read all of this. And I will do so. I will urge you to read all of this. But I want to share something here with you. Because if I am saying, if God is saying, I am there with you, the conditions, the circumstances that you go through may not they may not sync up. They may not reflect that God is there. I will show you. Look at what the Bible says. Uh, see, uh, 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 Psalm number 46, beginning from verse 1. The word of God says there, God is our refuge. Refuge means a protection, a hiding place, a stronghold. It says, our strength, a very present help in trouble. Then look at what it says, verse 2. It says, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake and the swell is thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Then look at what it says in verse 5. In all of that, he says, God is in the midst of her. Even if I stop here, I'm happy. It says God is the midst of her. But you will wonder and tell me, <laughs> if God is with me, if God is my refuge, if God, the Almighty God, is my strength, if this God is my present help in trouble, uh, why then is fear all around me? Why then am I going? Why then are mountains rising up against me? Why then are the seas, are the waters? Why then are they roaring? Why are they being troubled? Why then are the mountains shaking? Because that's what the Bible says. If God is with me, why then are the mountains? Why then am I in deep valleys? Why then are the, are the waters roaring, raging every time around me? But the Bible says, my child, that's what it says in verse 5 in the midst of this mountain in the midst of this valley in the midst of the storms in the midst of the raging storms god say i'll read it to you again psalm 46 verse 5 god is in the midst of her she shall not be moved he said god shall help her and that right early may god help you today no matter the valley you are in May the Almighty God help you because Jehovah Shama. No matter the storms that are raging against you, even this moment, I say, May the Almighty God arise and command that storm to be silent. Why? Because Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there. No matter the battles, no matter the raging, no matter the depth of the valley that you are in, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord is there. Why? Because the Lord is there with you, they will not overcome you. Hallelujah. Now I have to move forward, but read the whole of that chapter. And you will see because the Bible says he maketh the desolations. Look at what it says in verse number eight. Because it says, Behold the words of the Lord, what desolations he had made yet, he maketh wars to cease. Why will wars cease? You are wondering why did war arise? If God is there with me, why did the war arise? But he says he did not promise you that the war will not arise, he promised that he will make it to cease. That's why the Bible says, when the enemy shall come in like a storm, the Spirit of God shall lift up a standard. Why are you waiting for the storms? It's to demonstrate that Jehovah, Shama, Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty is there. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be put to shame. In the name of, and that is what the Bible assures us again. If you look at Isaiah number chapter 43, it says, when you pass through the waters, I will be there with you. <laughs> Let me read it to you. Isaiah chapter 43. Let's see from verse 42. Verse 2. Isaiah chapter 43. This is interesting. So that you wonder, why must I pass through the waters? Why must I go through the floods? Why are the mountains swallowing me up? Why am I in the depth of the valley? Why are the waters raging against me? I will show you something in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 43, look at verse, verse 2. Why are enemies all around me? Hear the word of God. Isaiah 43, look at verse 2. 
It says, when you pass through the waters, Malayizotolia, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. <laughs> you will wonder, why do I have to pass through the waters? You will. That is how you will demonstrate. God wants to demonstrate to you that He is there with you. Otherwise, you will not know that He is there. If there are no waters, He like my hand. If some of us don't see challenges, you will not run to God. That's the reality. You will not even acknowledge God. You will not even know that there is a God. Some of us will run to God because of our condition, because of the wickedness of the wicked. That's how some of us accepted Jesus. He said, Come and accept Jesus, and your battles will be over. Come and accept Jesus, and you'll be a married woman. Come and accept Jesus, and you, you, the oppression of the enemy will cease in your life. Some of us will run to Jesus because of the, the hugeness of the storm that is raging against us. Because Jesus is our shepherd. He becomes your shepherd. You come into his fold. But look at what the Bible says again. In that's Isaiah 43. It says, And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not kindle or shall not consume you. And then I will ask the question again. Some people will ask this question as well. <laughs> Why must I go through the waters? If you observe, it is S there, capital S. Waters, not just water. Why? He says, I'll be with you. Why must I go through the water? Again, they say, when you go through rivers, just rivers and storms and problems that, oh, that are too much for you. I say that is not enough. You are going through waters. You are going through rivers. You are going through, you are now going through fire. Malahaza. <laughs> you know what it says? Even when you are going through fire, he said that fire will not burn you. Why will it not burn you? Because he said it will not consume you. Why? Because Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah, the Lord is there with you. That is the way God wants to demonstrate his power to you. Oh Lord, demonstrate your power in my life. Silence the workers of iniquity. Silence those that hate my destiny. Silence those that hate your glory in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. So when you walk through the waters, when you go through the rivers, when you go through fire, God says, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. I am there. You see, when you pass through the waters, again, like I said to you, they are in S. The S is there. In waters, not water. Some people have not, they've only seen drops of water. <laughs> and they start to fear. But it says, don't be afraid. That's what it says. It says, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. So when you go through drips, not even waters, when you are going through a drop of water, not waters, it says, don't be afraid. Some people, they are not even seeing drops of water. They begin to fear. They say, ah, God is not with me. If God is with me, I will not see this water. No, the Lord is there with you. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there with you. They start to ask, Lord, where are you? Oh, Lord, where are you? That is exactly what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to cry. Why is now their God? You know, God is relying on you. He wants you to recognize that irrespective of the waters, irrespective of the rivers, irrespective of the, of the fire, irrespective of the storm, irrespective of the hatred that you see, irrespective of the association of the wicked that have gathered and conspired against you, against your family, against your promotion, against your marriage, against your fruitfulness, against your rising up, God wants you to recognize, say, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah, Sh uh, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. He wants you to recognize that. Now, Listen to this. If you remember, if you look at, if you study Matthew chapter 14 very well, you will see in Matthew chapter 14, you know, after Jesus has done that great miracle uh, of feeding uh, the multitudes, you know, the Bible records 5,000 women and children, the men were cannot even be counted. You see, we read the story there that Jesus walked on water in Matthew chapter 14. Jesus walked on water. Now, Peter, he seen a person walk on water. He did not recognize that it was Jesus. He said, it is a ghost. He said, it's a ghost. He thought it was a ghost that was walking on water. And then Jesus said to him, it is I. Jesus introduced himself. I am with you. Jehovah, Shammah, I am with you. And Peter said, if it is you, Lord, bid me to come. Let me pause for a minute. Because Jesus then bid him to come. So, in that water, there were storms there. If God is with them, if Jesus is with them, why are they afraid? Why is the water blowing? Why is the, the water rising up against them? Why is the water raging against them? The Bible did not promise you that there will be no dark moments. The Bible did not promise us there will be no raging of the waters. No, 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 no. Don't get that twisted, child of God. No. 
God did not assure you that in this battle, in this world that we battle free, you will not go, no, 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 no. But the word is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. That's what he's saying to you. In the midst, I have come to announce to somebody, in the midst of your rejection, Jehovah Shammah. In the midst of delays in your life, to your marriage, to your fruitfulness, <laughs> to your rising, to, the, to your promotion, I say to you, Jehovah Shammah. In the midst of the mountains, in the midst of the hills, in the midst of your challenges, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. You know, Peter was asked to walk on water because Jesus bid him to come. And then Peter was asked to walk on water. His faith was demanded. Your faith will be tested, child of God. Your faith, and when your faith is tested, will you rise up and recognize that you will only succeed against the waters, against the rivers, against the fire, because the Lord is there. Would you recognize that? You know, Peter was asked to walk on water. His faith was challenged. His faith was tested. You know what? He began to walk on water. Pay attention. He walked on water until what happened? Until he recognized, until he noticed, until his attention was drawn to the boisterous wind. And immediately he put his eye away from Jehovah Shammah, from the Lord that was there with him. All of a sudden, he began to sing. Why did he begin to sing? He lost focus on Jesus. He lost focus and forgot that the Lord Jesus was there with him. You see, nothing can go wrong when the Lord is with you. When he knew that Jesus was the one that told him to come, he walked on water. He walked on water. But the moment he moved his face away, he began to sing. Some of us, you recognize that Jesus is Lord. Amen. You are saved. You are washed in the blood. You have experienced and tasted one level of testimony. You have tasted one level of miracle in your life. And then a challenge comes. And all of a sudden, you forget the testimonies that you gave yesterday. You forgot the victory that God gave you yesterday. You forgot that it is by His grace and by His mercy that you are not consumed, that you are alive today because He has sustained you. You forgot all of that. And then all of a sudden, fear comes. And then you begin to run kitty kitty. You run kata kata. To run places. To secret calls. You begin to join secret calls because you have forgotten that the Lord is there. Hallelujah. Let me read that scripture to you. Look at Matthew chapter 14. Look at verse 13. The Bible says about Peter, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. He saw the wind. But remember he was walking on water before he saw the wind. The wind was there before. But he paid not attention to it. He paid attention to the word that was spoken to him. Come! And he came. He walked on water. Hallelujah. Just focus on the word. Hallelujah. Look at what it says again. And then he began to sing. He cried, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. And he said unto him, O thou of little feet, why did you doubt? Doubt causes us to lose focus. Doubt causes fears. Doubt causes fears to rise up. And when fear is there, the enemy will have a free day. I pray in the name of Jesus, the enemy will not have a free day in your own life. In your own family, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah to Jesus. You see, the truth is this. When you are about to be a candidate, this is what we forget. When you are called to be a candidate by the Almighty God for a testimony, there's a testimony waiting. There's a promotion waiting. There's a deliverance or a divine act of God that God wants you to be a partaker of. And you are invited into God's miracle. You see, you are never told the full story. God never tells you the full story. Do you know why? If you knew the full story, you would not even experience the fullness of the Almighty God's supernatural presence. You will not experience that miracle in fullness that you are expecting because God knows the end from the beginning. No man knows the end because God will give you a little here, a little there. Lines upon lines. Precepts upon precepts. He never gives you the full story. If God reveals to you that you are pregnant, you are looking for a child, for example. You are looking for a child. You are going to have a male child. God reveals to you that, oh, all of a sudden, after the five years you have been waiting upon the Lord, then God reveals to you you have a child. 
He said, he may tell you you have a male child or a female child. <laughs> Even if he tells you the child will be a prophet or he tells you that the child will be a doctor or a lawyer, he will not tell you that he will live in Okokomaiko. He will not tell you that the child will live in America or the child will be based. Even if he tells you, he does not tell you the city. Even when he tells you the city, he doesn't tell you the address. He never tells you the full story. God only knows the full story. And that is why you have to know and recognize God as your shepherd. Hallelujah to Jesus. You see, if you know the full story, you will not experience the fullness of God's supernatural presence. You will not experience his full power. You will not experience his presence with you because you will be walking in your own imagination. And whoever walked by his own strength, they will not prevail. For by strength shall no man prevail. So I declare to you, child of God, in the midst of that messy situation, that it seems that the, that is never ending, a road of escape shall be opened unto you in the mighty name of Jesus, because the Lord is there. Say amen to that. Hallelujah to Jesus. I pray for you, child of God. I say, in the midst of your darkness, La Barosilia, light will spring up in the mighty name of Jesus. How do I know? Because Jehovah, Shammah, the Lord is there, and Jesus is that light. <laughs> I say to you, child of God, in the midst of your struggles, the struggles that you are going through, <laughs> the pain, the failure that you are going through, a breakthrough is around the corner for you. Why? How do I know? Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there with you. In the midst of your rejection, child of God, in the midst of your loneliness, in the midst where you are lacking grace, like the supra, the grace of God, the favor of God shall speak for you. How do I know? Because Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. That will be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I said that will be your experience. That shall be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That will be your experience. It's in the midst of the storms that is raging against you in the midst of the contrary winds that is blowing whether it is a fire there shall be a great calm there shall be a great calm why because the lord is there jehovah shama the lord will turn up for you he will turn up for me the lord will show his power in my life in your life in the mighty name of jesus jehovah shama the lord is there with you hallelujah to jesus all peter had to do to accomplish a great miracle, a miracle that has never been read or heard or seen before or experienced by any man before, apart from Jesus, of walking on water to defy the laws of gravity, as at that time they have not told us about the law of gravity, was simply to obey, pay attention, to obey the spoken word. The spoken word was come, come. Just believe that word. You see, child of God, all you two you have to do to experience the touch of God and to experience the supernatural is to obey the word. No matter how foolish the instruction may be, obey the word, obey the Lord, and the Lord will come through for you in the mighty name of I said the Lord will come through for you in the mighty name of Jesus. As you obey that foolish word, it looks or sounds foolish if the Lord is the one speaking it. If you obey it, you will not be put to shame because the Lord will back his word. You know, that is what we are trying to preach. When we preach the simplicity, we try to teach the simplicity that you must obey the word of God so that you can accomplish greatness in this kingdom, in this earth, in life, in any sphere of life, in any area that God has positioned you. You see, you must obey the word. And when you obey the word, power will come by the anointing of the holy ghost and how do i know you see the holy spirit the holy ghost he will always do what he will always exalt the word god himself will exalt the word because god said i have exalted my words above all my names he told the children of israel he said thou shalt not call the name of the lord thy god in vain so if you cannot call his name in vain god is saying I have exalted my word above all my name. Hallelujah. God has exalted Jesus above every of his creation. Hallelujah to Jesus. And that's why the Bible says, all toes, all principalities, all dominions. It pleased the Father, the Bible says, that in him, in Christ Jesus, should all his fullness, all the glory, all the, the eminence of God, all the, all the, the power of God, to dwell in him bodily in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is that word. And the Holy Spirit will always uh, confirm that word. Remember, the same word is one that created all things. 
the waters, the rivers, the storms, the fire, the flood, the mountains, the valleys, the hills that you see that you are afraid of. What about the thrones, the powers, the altars, the dominions, the principalities, the house of wickedness, the enemies that hate your rising, the enemies you never see, the ones you never know. <laughs> Until God had decided to raise you, you never know you have some enemies. Until God had decided to raise you, there are some of us you never know people hate you. Until God positions you, until God. <laughs> and this is what we say to people run to Jesus today, make him your shepherd today. You see, there are enemies you will never know. You ask him, Oh Lord, increase me, oh Lord, prosper me, oh Lord, bless me. That's what the Bible says a great door. And effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. You want the blessings, adversaries will come. <laughs> a great door. If you if you do, you see, you may not see it now, but in future, tomorrow, the adversaries will come. They will rise up against you. They will contend against you because you never knew you had enemies until God had decided it is your time for rising. So while you are praying, oh Lord, raise me, oh Lord, bless me, bless my children, the enemy is waiting. Because in the time you are praying, it, uh, until the answer is coming, that's why you will see of Daniel when he was praying, he didn't need to fast for 21 days because God said from the moment you decided to pray, I have sent an angel. An angel has been dispatched, but the enemy held that angel. So until the testimony, so the angel did not, so the devil did not stop Daniel from praying. He only stopped his blessings. And that's what we are saying. You see, there are some people that will only manifest. Wicked people, evil people, household enemies. Enemies from within, enemies from outside. That will just rise up when God has decided to, to raise you up. It pains them. It, it pains them as they see you rise up. The moment God lifts you up, it begins to pain them. As it suits you that you are rejoicing, you are dancing, you are walking well, it pains them. <laughs> As it they sweet us, it they pain them. It hurts them to their core, to their belly. Some people just don't want to hear you succeed. They just don't want to hear good stories from you. You know, the irony is this. Some of us, <laughs> without wisdom and consciousness of the speaking grace, and the mercy of God, you begin to carry and display yourself the precious blessings, the goodness of the Lord in your life, you begin to cast it before the swine. Have you not heard? God himself said in the Bible, he said, you must not cast your pearls before swines. Swines don't appreciate you. The precious things that you carry, they don't appreciate it. They don't value your uniqueness. Your blessings means nothing to them. The blessings of the Lord, they want to squander it, they want to scatter it. And that's what the Bible says, and I'll read it to you in Matthew chapter number 6. Look at what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 7, look at verse 6. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample upon them under their feet. It holds no value to them. Not only that, not only that they will trample upon it, they will then turn again and rend you. As if it is not enough that they are taking that blessing, that they are scattering that blessing, they will now turn against you. So if a person, I will ask this question, if a person, through ignorance or through lack of knowledge, lack of wisdom, if that individual cast their pearls before the swine, and the swine does what he knows best, tramples upon it. Who is at fault? Are you going to blame the swine, or are you going to blame the individual that cast their precious pearls before the swine? Uh, the story is this you are trying to impress people that don't appreciate you, they don't value you, they don't value what you carry. Rather, they will trample upon your gift. They will trample upon the blessing you are carrying. You have been praying and fasting for it. Your precious thoughts, your ideas, your innovative ideas, they will trample it upon the floor. Not only that, they will then come against you and fight you. That's what the Bible says. It says they will turn again and rend you. They will fight you. 
You see, when you cast your, your pearls before swines, when you display all you have on social media, hello, some of us, we are always on Facebook, we are always on Twitter, we are always on Instagram, <laughs> you are always on other social platforms, uh, what do they call it? You put all your gold chains, you wear them. All the nerves and Patek Philippe, your wrist watches on your wrist, you put them on your wrist switch like that. <laughs> you want to show up. You know, the watches that are more expensive than some people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> some people are wearing watches that are more expensive than proper houses the houses that their whole family lives in the one they have in the village and the one they have in the city a single wrist watch is more expensive than it amen <laughs> it's like you are walking around with the most expensive even in london you are walking out with the most expensive uh, uh watch on your wrist the, the 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 houses that you have in Westminster on the the most important streets even in London or America you are we are walking around with it in your hand and then you are showing it off you are wearing your rings you put rings on your hand your bushy bags your Versace clothes you put them on your on your body and your night vigil you know what happens your night vigil your warfare will never end yes go and take it to the bank so if you don't understand you want to display your night vigil will not end your warfare will continue <laughs> because she did not have wisdom you see some will rather prefer to wake up every 12 midnight uh, they say i have to go to bed early because i have to wake up 12 midnight i have to pray from 12 midnight to 3 a.m i have to pray um <laughs> that's why the bible says wisdom is the principal thing the reason god has not blessed some people is because he knows that the swine will come against you they will come after you and he's only delivering you it's for your own good he's only delivering you protecting you from the the ruggedness of your enemies so some enemies they are like hyenas they are ruthless they are relentless they don't stop they come in a pack they come in a storm they come in the waters they come in the fire they come by every measure you know that's why god has not blessed some of us because you don't have wisdom you know some people they rather decide to wake up 12 midnight every day to 3 a.m <laughs> praying and fighting with devils praying and fighting warfare prayers against spirits hello they will pray against household enemies hold it for a second <laughs> did i say it's wrong to do that it is not wrong you see but for me i would rather wake up at the same time i would rather wake up at 3 a.m or 12 a.m self to 5 a.m and have a wonderful time in the presence of my father rejoicing and thanking him for his wonderful works for the gift of life of good health of deliverance of merited favor and the diverse blessings of god in my life i'd rather do that than fighting warfare all the time do you think your go your papa your mama your your bishop do you think every time they wake up is to fight warfare no you will see them dancing before the lord you will see them studying they want to develop their relationship with their father you are the one spending your night time burning the midnight oil 12 p.m to 3 a.m every night you're fighting the devil is because you lack wisdom you see you can wake up even if you you know i'd rather wake up between that time 12 a.m to 3 p.m and use my brain and be creative to be creative to be innovative there are things that you can do with your time may the almighty god may he deliver you may he deliver us may he fight for you so that your warfare may cease so that you can go on be delivered and begin to serve god in jesus precious name you know some people they prefer to call their man of god they will say papa prophet at 3 a.m 12 a.m midnight 12 p.m. midnight. Prophet, man of God, please pray with me. They have come again. The enemy, they have come. They have not permitted me to sleep. When the word of God says, if you go to Psalm 127, it says, it is in vain for you to rise up early or to sit up late to eat the bread of what? The bread of sorrows. He calls it bread of sorrows. It's because why? He gave his beloved sleep. God gives his own sleep. He gives his beloved sleep. I had the man of God that says, it is not me doing anything. It is Bishop Boyedepo. He says, as big as our ministry is, I am not the one doing anything. So I sleep like a baby. If a man that has <laughs> ministries all over the world, as big as he is, if he can say, I sleep like a baby, you, what is your problem? 
go to God. Make God your shepherd. Make God recognize God that Jehovah he is your Jehovah Shammah. Recognize that He is there with you. You see, the word of God says again, it says, I lay me down, I slept, I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. If you look in Psalm number four, let me read that to you. Psalm number four, verse number eight. Look at what it says. I'll read it to you. Psalm four, verse eight. I will both lay me down in peace. That's what it says. I will sleep. For thou, Lord. I only makes me to dwell in safety. God gives his beloved sleep. May the Almighty God give you sleep, give you rest in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, the sleep that the Bible is talking about must have been peaceful for him to know that it was not his own warfare prayers or it was not his own much fasting that sustained him, but it was the Lord that sustained him. I pray for you hearing me. I pray for you watching me. May the Almighty God give you peace of mind in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you. You are hearing me. I say, may the Almighty God, may He give you peace of mind. May the Almighty God give you all around rest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. May the Almighty God arrest the powers that are taking your sleep, the enemies that are fighting you in the midnight time. May the Almighty God arrest them and give you rest in Jesus' name. I pray for you, child of God, that in the mighty name of Jesus, those your enemies that will not have you to rule over them, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lehika Parudilia Makurinse the Almighty God shall arise to your behalf and cast them down before you. They shall bow down to your feet. They shall come and worship God at your feet. They shall say, your God shall be my God. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Because God has called you to be ahead. You will forever remain ahead. You will never be found at the bottom in Jesus' name. Why? Because the Lord will sustain you at the top. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. You see, there are times when the night season will come. There are times when the night time will come. And you are restless. It's understandable. The night season will come when it seems that there is no way out. And it seems that you are overwhelmed with pain. You are overwhelmed with sickness and infirmity. You see, the night season will come when it looks like you are what? You will never see. So it will look like no solution is going to come. You will experience no breakthrough. That is what it looks like. You see, you, it looks like you will never see goodness of the Lord. You see, the, the, the night season may appear, it may come, it may appear to be very long. And it may look like the day will never come. Some people are like that. They, they live in that kind of realm. You see, it uh, may appear that the night season may come when it looks like God is far from you. It may look like that. But I want to encourage you. In your night season, draw nearer and recognize that the Lord is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is near you. The Lord, and he wants to demonstrate his power in your life. May the power of the Almighty God may it be visible in your life. In your nice season, child of God, the Lord is there. I'm going to write up now. Look at what the Bible says in Job chapter 35. Look at verse 10. The Bible says in Job chapter 35, verse 10, it says, But none said, Where is God my maker? Who giveth songs in the night? He giveth songs in the night. You see, rather than being sorrowful in the night season, praise God. And the day, and the daylight shall come. Your victory shall come. Let your heart be full of praise. Recognizing God, His goodness, His mercies, His loving kindness, the victories He has given you, the healings, the deliverances, the provisions He has given you, the life He has given you. Recognize Him, child of God. Raise a song in the night to the Lord. In the night season, you, when you do that, you are demonstrating that you recognize that the Lord is there. Jehovah, Shammah. And if the Lord is there, he will come through for you. If you recognize him that he is there, he will come through for you. He loves you much more than you know. The night season will surely come, but day will surely come. That's what the Bible says. The night seasons will surely come. It will come because God wants to demonstrate that he is the Lord of the daytime. He is the Lord of the night and he is the Lord of the daytime. If you do not faint, if you do not allow the waters... The rivers, the fire, the mountains, the valleys, the hills to overwhelm you. God says, in that season, I will show you. I will stretch forth my arms and I will deliver you. May the arms of the Almighty God deliver you. The word of the Almighty God says, if you see some 30 and verse 5, it says, there are weeping may endure. Malizo, perial hazard. Weeping may endure for the night. But joy, holiday, joy, joy. Comment in the morning. I pray for you in the name of your, your morning has come. 
Your morning season has come. As you are moving into a new week, as you are moving into the end of this month, as you are moving into a new month, I say a new season has come. Your morning has come. And in the morning, it is called joy. Your testimony, your miracle, your breakthrough, your promotion, the favor of God, the mercy of God will begin to speak in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, in the night nice season, remember you are not alone. God has assured you, child of God, he says, I am with you. God will rather that you trust him. You know, when the darkness is around, trust his word. Trust the word of God rather than trusting the powers of darkness. Rather than thinking that the powers of darkness will overwhelm you, trust the word of the Almighty God. The word of God is true at all times. Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah. Say that with me. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Say it with me. The Lord is there. In my life, the Lord is there. In my marriage, the Lord is there. In my destiny, the Lord is there. In this new week I am going into, the Lord is there. In this new month I am about to enter, the Lord is there. In the inheritance that God has given me, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. He is there with you, child of God. Why? He is your shepherd. He is my shepherd. He is the one that has apportioned the land. He is the one that has apportioned the blessings. He has apportioned the children to you. He has apportioned your marriage, your husband, your wife, your heritage, your testimonies. And he will not permit the rod of the wicked. He will not permit the rod of the enemy to scatter them. He will not permit the rod of the wicked to rest upon your lot. <laughs> I say the name of Jesus. Because Jehovah Shammah, because the Lord is there with you, in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. Have a blessed week, child of God. And because Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there with you, you will succeed, you will prevail in Jesus' name. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Amen. Have a blessed week, child of God. Have a great week and have a great new month in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen and amen.